Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. As Ben mentioned, I'm pretty excited. I'm going to show you some uh, new capability today that is quite interesting and I think you'll find very interesting. And I'm going to show it to you in two different platforms. So we're always trying to emphasize that we're integrated across multiple platforms. And today, uh, instead of staying in one platform, you'll see it in multiple platforms. So we're, you know, we're talking about the platforms. I'm going to show you dimensional distance measurement, which is a new measurement that we just added. And I'm going to show you that in CATIA V5. And then I'm going to jump over to volume measurement, which is a new measurement. It speaks for itself, can measure volume. I'm going to show you that in NX. And then uh, the last two, what's new and miscellaneous enhancements, that's going to be covered by Maria and she's gonna do it in Creo. So Ben covered this slide for me. I don't have to talk about it because he stole it out of my presentation. So let's talk about dimensional distance. I only have a couple slides, but uh, those of you that have been modeling with our software, when we wanna measure the distance between a surface and a pin, you know, a lot of times we'd have to measure the diameter of the pin because that's got variation. Then we measure from the center of the pin to the surface, and then we use the equation measure and subtract the diameter from the distance. And, you know, it's a lot of work. So now we added this uh, dimension distance measure, as you can see from this picture here. We can measure center to center, minimum distance, maximum distance and produce similar results that you get if you measure the same type of thing in your CAD platform. We also have added the capability for this dimensional distance measure to extract directly from the CAD. So if you have, you know, assembly dimension distance measures as you see in this picture here, or you see over here and here, with a button click, we can extract them and turn them into measurements in the 3DCS software. With that, I'm going to jump over to Katia. And of course, you know, I have a different picture here. Oops. Katia uses a mouse. <clears throat> and so this is a very simple model because I want to get, have you understand the effects. So the first thing I'm going to do is just hit deviate. <clears throat> And you can see that I have a, a position, size, and orientation tolerance on here. There's a position tolerance here. And this one just has a position and a orientation tolerance. <laughs> Down here, these are the dimension distance measures that are already written. <clears throat> and if I run this analysis, I'm gonna go ahead and run a quick analysis. Ooh, maybe I'll do a quick 5,000 instead of 10,000. And the, the main thing I want to point out is, you know, we're measuring from this pin to this sphere. And if you look at the nominal, it's 302, it's 252, it's 352. So we can, you know, automatically pick up the, um, minimum and maximum distance subtracting in and out the, uh, the diameter of the sphere or the diameter of the pin. And if you look, if you look, you can see I have a position tolerance contributor and a perpendicularity tolerance contributor. And if I go minimum distance, now I have a position, perpendicularity and size because that's taking me out to the edge here. And of course, if I go maximum distance, the contributors are the same. <clears throat> so those were measurements that were already written, just so that you could see the process. I'm gonna go ahead and write a measurement. And in the pull down now, you can see you have your point distance, your GDT measure, and now inserted in here is dimension distance measure. If I click on that, from this dialog box, you have three pull downs. You can measure center to center, minimum distance, 
maximum distance. And then you just pick your features. So I'm gonna measure between this hole and this pin. So I'll pick that hole and I'll pick this pin. And you can see center to center, it says it's 300. If I change this to minimum distance, it's 200. Maximum distance, it's 400. Okay, so it's picking up the distance, the differences in the radius or diameter, whichever one you want to refer to. I'm going to keep it at minimum distance and just say, okay. So now we have another measurement between this pin and this hole. And I'll go ahead and run another analysis real quick. I go into this measurement. Now you can see, if you remember, this had a size, position, orientation. This has a size and an orientation. And if you look at your contributors, you got position, perpendicular, perpendicular, hole size, pin size. 200 is the nominal. So the idea is with this measurement, we can now calculate the same values that you get in your CAD system without having to do a bunch of equation, equation measures to pick up uh, the minimum distance between diametrical features or spherical diametrical pins. So then what I want to show is that uh, if I go up here into Katia, you can see at the assembly level, I also have dimension distance written. So this is dimensions written with inside the CAD system. And you can see how, you know, this one's going to the outside edge. So I'm measuring from this face to this outside edge or the inside edge or the center. So if you have those already written, got to get my uh, go to meeting out of my way. Then I can come over here and you can see we have another button. So previously, you know, you're familiar, if you're familiar with our CATIA package, we have update model, update geometry, import the FTNA import the assembly FTA as gd &T measures, and now we have a new button, update measure. If I click this button here, you can pull in dimension measures from all components, parts only, or products only. I only have dimension distance measures written at the product, so I'll just pick this, and you can see that it's got three, it pulled in three measurements. I want you to pay attention to the spec limits that you see here, 200 plus or minus 0.25, 150 plus or minus 0.5, et cetera. So now if I come down here, you can see that I have three more measurements. That little icon is telling you it was pulled in from the CAT system. So this is, you know, as we're continually stepping forward to model-based definition and pulling as much information that's embedded in the CAD as possible. And if we look at this center distance, which is 200 plus or minus 0.25, let's go in this measurement. I got the plus or minus 0.25, it's 200, it's set to center. If I go into this minimum distance, you can see it's set to minimum distance. It's set to plus or minus 0.5. That threw me for just a second. And it's 150. We'll do one last check. Maximum distance 250 plus or minus 1. So with the push of a button, we can extract the dimension distances or we can write them directly in our software. And then we can run an analysis. Hey, Gary, I got a couple pertinent questions that came in real fast um sure sure so uh thank you dj um how does dimensional distance measurement minmo differ from feature measure 
And can you use this in iteration moves to bring two parts into contact like feature measure? The dimension distance measure is looking at the top, middle, and bottom of the, the hole or pin. And then it's measuring it along the vector from the feature picked. So this one here would be measuring normal to this surface from here to this point, this point, this point, and then outputting the minimum, you know, if, if it's up here or down here. So it's a little, it's different than the feature measure and it wouldn't pick up, you know, it wouldn't pick up if you had some kind of bump in the center here. It's just going to look at the three spots. So a uh, follow up on that. Um, thank you, Dean. Uh, does that assume infinite length pins and holes? No, we, we are looking at the CAD and going to the top and the bottom. It's not assuming the infinite length. Great, one, one last one. Um, thank you, David. For the distance measure in CATIA V5, will the mesh setting affect the measurement if measuring to or from a cylindrical feature? No, again, because we are set essentially taking this feature and representing it with internally a point at the bottom, the middle, and the top. So it would be it would be like grading three points, doing a point-to-point -point measure along a vector, and now putting the minimum of the well, taking the circle diameter at the top and the middle and the bottom, measuring from this point to the top, middle, bottom, finding the minimum distance, subtracting the diameter. Okay, so it's it's essentially just looking at it at three sections. Thank you. The mesh, yeah, the mesh won't affect.